All right, students, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, some examples of Lewis star structures and how we're going to be using the Vesper theory to determine the shape of these uh, uh, Lewis star structures. So let me give you an example. I have CH4. So the first step to figure out uh, when you're try drawing the Lewis star structure is finding the total valence electrons. So your total valence electrons in this case is going to be we have four on carbon and we got uh, one on each of these hydrogens. So that's a total of eight valence electrons. The next step is finding the central atom. And your central atom in this case is going to be the carbon. Okay. And then you want to go ahead and put the central atom in the middle. And then you will put the surrounding atoms all around it. So obviously there are steps on drawing the Lewis star structures. I have another video where I have uh, uh, gone through the stepwise uh, drawing the Lewis star structures. So if you have trouble draw drawing Lewis star structures, make sure you watch that video first, and then come back to this one. Now the next step is putting an electron pair between the central atom and the surrounding atom, or another way of saying, putting in a, a bond between the central atom and the surrounding atom. So I'll put one bond between the central atom and the surrounding atom to begin with, and then count how many electrons you have actually used. Well, each bond brings in two electrons, so that means placing four bonds in there, I have used eight electrons. And that's how many electrons I have uh, to begin with, okay? Now, before you finalize your Lewis star structure, make sure everyone is happy in terms of the, the octet rule. <coughs> when you look at the hydrogens, remember hydrogen needs only two, uh, two electrons. And when you draw a bond between the hydrogen and another element, that brings in two electrons for the hydrogen. So hydrogen needs only one bond, so it's good to go. When you look at the carbon, well, carbon has four bonds around it. So that means it's got eight electrons on it, and that means it's got the octet completed. So that one is happy as well. Okay, so once you have figured out your Lewis star structure, the next step is to figure out what's the shape going to be. All right, so when it comes down to the shapes, you have to uh, figure, be able to figure out how many bonding domains you have. All right, and if you recall, the bonding domains, uh, the bonding domains are the same as the bonds you are making in there. So in this case, you have four separate bonds in there, four uh, uh, single bonds in there. So your bonding domain is four. And when you're trying to draw, when you're trying to predict the geometry, you always look at the lone pairs on the central atom. Okay, so in this case, the central atom is the carbon and ask yourself do you have any lone pair on the carbon and the answer is no there's no lone pair on the central atom in this case so you go ahead and count these uh, add these bonding domains and the lone pairs to make a total of so-called electron domains so your electron domains is always going to be equal to the sum of bonding domains plus the sum of the lone pairs on the central atom. So that's still going to be 4. Okay, so once you have this breakdown, which means you have your total number of electron domains, and you have the breakdown of the bonding domains and the lone pairs on the central atom, then you go on to this Vesper theory chart. Okay, so this is how the Vesper theory chart looks like. You may have to memorize it in some classes, or you, can, uh, or you may be given this chart. Okay, you can see on the left column, you see these electron domains there, and you have two electron domains total, or you can have three electrons, four electron domains, five or six. Obviously, they gets complicated, and it gets hard to memorize all these things. Up to four electron domains is very common, and then uh, the five, for the 5 and 6, the trigonal bipyramidal, the first one, and the octahedral, they are also very common. The other ones, you see those, but sometimes teachers don't make you memorize those. Okay, so then 
if you have four electron domains and if you go back and that's how many electron domains we have total in our CH4 okay and then you have only one uh, four bonding domains and there was actually no lone pair so that means I move across and see where it matches with the number of lone pairs that are actually given to you here the number of lone pairs here are zero which means we are in the very first column here after the electron domains and when you go cross down it tells you the shape is actually going to be the tetrahedral okay now anytime you have a zero lone pair your electron geometry and your molecular geometry is the same and also keep in mind your electron geometry is always going to be dependent on the total electron domains only so whenever you have if you have four electron domains then you have tetrahedral as your electron geometry if you have five electron domains you will have trignal bipyramidal as your electron geometry your molecular geometry which also called the shape of the molecules that will change depending on the number of lone pairs okay so then let's go back here we have four bonding domains no lone pairs so that means we are in the very first column here so your electron geometry and your molecular geometry are going to be the same and that's going to be the tetrahedral okay so i would say my electron uh, geometry and the sh uh, molecular geometry uh, remember the molecular geometry is also called the shape of the molecule they're both going to be tetrahedral now if you look in tetrahedral there's four bonds attached to it it's a more like a three-dimensional representation so two of those bonds are going to be in the plane so the bonds that are drawn with the line here so this bond right there and that bond right there they are in the plane and the other two bonds are going to be one would be coming out of the page so this uh, the one that has the solid wedges that represents it's coming out of the page and the one that has the dashed lines it represents it's going back into the page so that means this is the three-dimensional representation and this is how you want to be uh, drawing those from now on you want to make sure you're familiar with this and the bond angle between each of those is going to be 109.5 degrees so now if I go back to my CH4 now the Lewis star structure was just drawn very uh, on the on a surface on a plane just having four hydrogens all around but when I draw this uh, three-dimensional representation for this it's going to be two bonds in the plane okay so I have two hydrogens in the plane and then one of the hydrogen is going to be coming out of the page so the one that comes out of the page is going to be shown with the solid wedge okay and then you'll have one bond going back into the page and that's going to be with the dash so the dash lines shows it's going back into the page and the solid wedge shows it's out of the page make sure you know this terminology as well okay well let's take another example let's try to draw the Lewis star structure and then predict the geometry for the co2 that's carbon dioxide so find the total valence electrons first the total valence electrons for carbon dioxide is going to be well we got four on the carbon and then we have two oxygens and each of them is going to have uh, six valence electrons so that's a total of uh, 16 valence electrons the next step is to pick the central atom what's the central atom going to be here well of course carbon because remember if you have carbon it's mostly the central atom and in this case carbon would indeed be the central atom so I'll go ahead and put the carbon in the center and then I'll have oxygens around it okay so the first step you want to do is place one bond between the central atom and the surrounding atom so carbon and the oxygens and when you do so you are using four electrons okay so that means you still have out of 16 you still have 10 electrons remaining I'm oh, sorry 12 electrons remaining uh, 16 minus 4 is 12 not 10 okay so then 
the next step is to fulfill the octets of the surrounding atoms. So right now, each of the oxygen has only two electrons. So that means I can go ahead and put six more on each of those oxygens to take care of the octets. Now, when you put six electrons around each of these oxygens, that uses up the remaining 12 electrons. Okay, so I can go ahead and subtract these 12 electrons. That means I have no electrons left over. Another way of saying, all 16 valence electrons have been used. Now, before you finalize your structure, you want to make sure everyone is happy in terms of the octave rule. So when you look at this oxygen, the oxygen has eight electrons, okay? both of those. But when you look at carbon, carbon has only two bonds around it. That means it's got only four electrons. All right. So carbon is not really happy at this point. We got to make sure the octet of the carbon is completed. Because remember, carbon does, is not one of those exceptions that could have less than eight or more than eight. It needs to have exactly eight. Okay. So then to kind of take care of that, uh, you want to make sure you giving four more electrons to the carbon, but then at the same time, you want to make sure you're not taking away anything from the oxygen, because if you take away from the oxygen, then you would have not a completed octave for the oxygen. So to kind of uh, take care of that problem, you can actually go ahead and create a double bond. What that really means, one of the lone pairs from the oxygen goes in there to create the double bond, and another lone pair from the other oxygen goes in there to create the double bond. Uh, so now you have a double bond between the carbons and oxygens, and that's how it looks like. Okay, so now let's look at the electrons again. Remember, two, uh, a, a one double bond brings in four electrons. So now this oxygen has eight electrons. This carbon has two double bonds around it, so it's going to have eight electrons. And then this oxygen is going to have eight electrons as well. So sometimes you have to create double bonds and triple bonds to make sure everyone is happy in terms of the octave rule. Okay, so this is how the Lewis stock structure looks like for the carbon dioxide. Now let's try to figure out its geometry and the electron, uh, electron geometry and the molecular geometry. Well, first of all, go ahead and count the total uh, electron domains by counting the bonding domains. All right, so how many bonding domains you have around the carbon? The answer is going to be two. All right, so now this is where students get confused sometimes. If you have a double bond or if you have a triple bond, you still count those as two bonding domains, right, as a one bonding domain. So that's one bonding domain, that's one bonding domain. Even if you had a triple bond, that would still count as one bonding domain. That would not count as three bonding domains. Okay, so you have two bonding domains. There is no lone pair on the central atom. Okay, so that means your total electron domains would be two. So since you have total electron domains of two, then you go back to that chart uh, having two total electron domains, no lone pairs. So that means your electron geometry and the shape would be the same. So you're right here two electron domains, zero lone pairs, so that means your shape is actually going to be linear within a bond angle of 180. So at the end of the day, we know now the shape and your electron geometry, in this case, would be the same, and that's going to be the linear with the bond angle of 180 degrees. Okay. All right, so let's, uh, let me take another example, uh, a common molecule, water. Uh, water, let's count the total of uh, valence electrons in this case. We have six in oxygen, and we have one in each oxygen, uh, hydrogen, so that gives you a total of uh, eight. Now, oxygen is going to be your central atom, all right, so I'm not going to write that out, so I'll just go and draw that out here. And then I'll have hydrogens around the surrounding. So I'll go ahead and put one bond between the hydrogens and the oxygen. And that uses up four electrons. So that means you still have four more electrons to go. And then when you look here, hydrogen does not need any more electrons. So that means those remaining electrons must go onto the central atom. All right. So you must put 
two four electrons as two lone pairs on the central atom. So this is how the the Lewis star structure is going to look like. And if you see, the hydrogen is happy. It's got two electrons. The oxygen has eight electrons now. Two uh, four electrons coming from the two lone pairs and four electrons coming from the two bonds. So it's also happy. Okay, now let's look at its shape. We have how many bonding domains? Let's say bonding domains is going to be two because it's making two bonds around it. And then how many lone pairs on the hydrogen on the oxygen? It's got two lone pairs on the oxygen. So remember, you only focus on the lone pairs of the central atom when you're trying to determine the shape. Okay, you there are going to be times when you have lone pairs on the surrounding atoms. Make sure you don't fall in that trap. Don't look at the lone pairs of the surrounding atom when you're trying to determine the shape. Only the central atom. So then, your total electron domains in this case are going to be four, with the breakdown of two bonding domains and two lone pairs. Okay, so since you have four electron domains, let's go back to that chart. Okay, so I got four electron domains. Let me change the color here. Uh, different one. So you got four electron domains, and then you have four electron domains with a breakdown of two lone pairs. So that means we are actually right here. Okay, so your electron geometry is going to be based on the four electron domains, which is still going to be tetrahedral. All right, so your electron geometry is always based on the the electron domains. But your shape is not going to be the same anymore. It's actually going to be the bent, which is this right here. So that's how you're going to be reading this uh, table. Okay, so if I go down here, I would say my electron geometry is tetrahedral. But your molecular geometry or the shape is actually going to be the bent. All right, so that's how you're going to be drawing the Lewis star structure, and then eventually, well, hold on, I, I think I did miss one thing. So when you draw this Lewis star structure, we have drawn this uh, straight uh, linear, but now we know the actual shape of this water molecule is actually going to be bent. So you want to go back and make sure you draw it actually like this. So this is how the water molecule actually looks like. It's bent and not a linear. All right, so this is how you're going to be drawing the Lewis star structure and then pairing this up with the Vesper theory to figure out the geometry of these molecules. And uh, I uh, I'll have more examples uh, in another video.